And we are live again on Facebook tonight. So, well, for me, it's tonight. For me, it's 8 p.m. Right now, it's uh, 1 p.m. in Oklahoma, and it's 2 p.m. in New York. But who cares? The fact is, we are here live. And as I made the publicity earlier uh, tonight, earlier this afternoon for some, is that I wanted to come back tonight on Facebook for a second session. Why did I do that? Why? Because normally I do everything on my own. But I got a question from Carrie, and she was talking about her vet. And I said, you know what? I think it's interesting today if I would ask one of our dear friends of Dr. Brian McLaren of a vet in the United States who does use photonotherapy for so many years to ask him to be present. And that's why I have here tonight with us Dr. Terry Woods from Muston, Oklahoma. And Dr. Woods, I usually call you Terry, but I prefer to call you doctor tonight. <laughs> okay. Um, First of all, before we go into uh, to answer Carrie's question, I would say, please, Dr. Woods, present yourself. Tell us where you're from. Tell us, have you known photonotherapy? Tell us what you do with it. And certainly, above everything, let the world know you are a holistic veterinarian because we know so many people are looking for people like you. Well, I appreciate that. Yes, yes, I am. Uh, I didn't start out that way. I was Western trained. I actually grew up on a farm in uh, South Dakota, and uh, we raised small grains and cattle. And then I went to South Dakota State University, and they don't have a vet school in South Dakota, so I was accepted at Iowa State. I graduated from there in 1981. I worked at a small animal practice for a few months, then a large animal practice in southern Oklahoma for four years, and then after that, I bought a small animal practice in, in Mustang, just a suburb of Oklahoma City. Uh, for the first 15 years I was in practice, I was just traditional Western medicine. That's what I was taught. But there was events along the way that convinced me that I needed to look for more. Uh, you know, I, I was taught that if I suppress symptoms, I've cured the pet. Well, I realized that that wasn't the case. In fact, one, one individual, I was out to examine a lame horse a lame horse when I was in uh, Comanche, Oklahoma, and uh, the rancher, uh, I, I, I thought I did a great exam. I did some nerve blocks, told him what it was. I forget, it's been 40 years ago. Um, and he kind of gave me this look and he said, Doc, is that all the better you can do? I thought you're going to fix it, not just mask the symptoms, because what I told him was, is we'd give him butte for two weeks and rest him for six weeks and he'd be fine. And I said, I'm sorry, sir. That's what I was taught to do. I did a great job on diagnosing this lameness and that's what I was taught to do. So that's what we're going to do. Now I can go, hey, I can fix it now. <laughs> but I, I couldn't at the time. But events like that really stick in your memory. And as you go along, more things happen. But Dr. McLaren spent five years in Oklahoma City and he sponsored a local meeting for our Central Oklahoma Veterinary Medical Association. Well, I'm, I'm sorry to say I went because it was a free meal and an hour of continuing education. So, you know, being transparent, that's why I went. But, uh, you know, I, I uh, heard his presentation and I thought, this guy's crazy. He got a bad mushroom and a pizza somewhere. And so, of course, I, I went and talked to him afterwards. That was a Tuesday because I take Thursday afternoons off. So I used to work sale barn on Thursday. So I take that Thursday afternoons off. I invited him to the clinic. He spent the afternoon there. I bought a torch. I thought, you big dummy, what did you do? But immediately I did a very, normally a very bloody surgery the next day. And when I did the surgery, very inexpertly doing the light, the dog did not bleed at all. And I thought, holy cow, I've got to do more. So he, I, I, got to know uh, Dr. McLaren very well for the next four years and he's out to clinic. We put on classes. It was a really great time. Um, great, and I, I just admire him so much uh, and I learned so much from him. Um, I'm sure he thought he had the special ed student trying to teach me all that stuff, but I guess some of it stuck. But yeah, I, I use the torch literally every day. Um, I use it before and after all my surgeries. Uh, I don't have to use pain pills. I don't use the Elizabethan collars. They don't chew at their incisions. Uh, 10 days when I take the sutures out, it looks like I did it three weeks prior. Um, I treat everything from 
torn ACLs to, uh, you know, paralyzed oxens. I've probably had over the last 20 years, probably a couple hundred paralyzed oxens. I had one just the other day, three treatments, dog came in walking on his own power. It's like, yes, once again. So, um, you know, there's very few things I won't. I, I took care of the horses for a therapeutic riding program for about six years. And that's all I did was the photonic therapy. And they were old broken down rodeo horses and we, we, I kept them going. Uh, they were from 16 to 28 years old. And of course they had to be safe. You can't have kids that are gonna fall. Uh, you know, you can't have a horse that's gonna stumble and hurt a kid. So, um, you know, that was that was good. But yeah, I, I, I uh, in fact, I've got it in my bag right next to me. I, and, uh, you know, on a personal note, I'm actually in congestive heart failure. I'm doing really well, but I treat myself uh, once a month, once a week, I'm sorry. Um, and I know my uh, heart failure doctor, I've told her, I says, well, I'm, I'm doing this. And she said, oh, that's nice. But my, my ejection fraction went from 10, 10, 5 to 10% in the death zone, and it's up to 55%. None of her other patients have done that. But, yeah. you know, it's nice that I'm doing the photonic therapy. So, yeah, I'm a believer. I wouldn't, wouldn't go to work without it. That's great. And I also remember, I don't know from what year it is, but uh, uh, in our library, uh, when the people go to the website, they can find one of the articles that you wrote together with Dr. Brian McLaren about all the case studies that you did, that how you were using photonic therapy, for example, how to stop the bleeding. And also uh, I read in the paper uh, about all these dogs who died officially but with using for therapy, you revived them again? Yes. Yeah, that, that was for the SPIE. It was the International Society of Optical Engineers. And that was, uh, we didn't do it personally, but it was presented. It's in the register at the uh, International Society of Optical Engineers. It was in San Francisco a number of years ago. But yeah, we, we, uh, we did that. And oh my goodness, I've probably had over the years, probably 30 dogs that were dead. They were not breathing. They had no heartbeat and uh, they were purple, blue, they were not breathing. And, uh, you know, by using the torch, I was able to wake them back up and send them home. And, uh, you know, walking, not in a box. So yeah, yeah it's, that's my crash card, it's my life. <laughs> why, why is it so difficult for people to believe that there is still something in this world that is not Western medicine, but that does work? It's so, I mean, it's so sad sometimes. Well, for me, anyways, it's very sad when I am on Facebook and I read all these stories about uh, the animal suffering um, or animals with arthritis and the vet has told them, oh, this is now chronic, forget it. Uh, you have to give him pain pills for the rest of his life and then the pain pills will give problems to his stomach because it, the pain pills have secondary effects. And then you say, but why? Do people have it so hard to just say, just try for the therapy, you'll see, it will be better. Uh, it, I, we, I must say that every year we have more and more sales of torches, which is important. With bringing also the prices down, people, it's easier for people to buy the torches and we can help more people. But it's just sad that I don't have a thousand and one vets like you who is using it every day. Because most vets, when they do the studies, they just learn everything has been proven scientifically and that's what you can believe and all the rest you can't believe. And they don't even want to know what we have meanwhile proven scientifically with phototherapy or with traditional Chinese medicine. So, well, I think, I think part of it is you have to be willing to step out of your comfort zone. Yeah. And I gave up worrying about looking stupid a long time ago. So, <laughs> I mean, if it's going to help the pet, I'm going to do it. And, yeah. you know, it, it's so funny because a lot of people, it's like, well, because here we are in very conservative central Oklahoma, yeah. and yet we have people that come from all over, uh, several states away, that will come for it. And they're so relieved that I'm not telling them you have to euthanize your pet because there's nothing that can be done. Um, yeah. And... You know, but it's definitely, that's the hardest part is stepping out of your comfort zone because, you know, and even legally, there's the standard of care, quote unquote, that, well, I'm doing what I was taught, therefore, I'm doing the right things. But uh, sometimes you have to step out from that and be willing to, to 
and it's not a risk, but you have in their own mind, they feel like they have, they're taking a risk by putting themselves out and going, well, this is stupid. I'm shining this red light on there and I expect them to, you know, what am I doing? Oh no, give them the drugs and call it. Cause that's my goal is I try to get, there's, I, I try to get pets off pain medication all the time and generally very successful in doing that. I have at this moment uh, next to me uh, a 13 year old. Well, in two weeks, she will be 13 year old. Uh, mixed Dalmatian with cervical um, hernias, with thoracolumbar hernias, uh, with severe arthrosis, complete deformation of her elbow. And these, the dogs I have here are all rescues. Well, the chickens are rescues, the horses are rescues. I only have rescues here because I have a rescue center. So I don't buy animals, I have rescue uh, animals, and I have rescue cats, of course. But um, this dog, uh, Gypsy, she, so I said, um, hernias in the neck, hernias, thoracolumbar, the arthrosis. People cannot believe that she is taking zero, zero medication. She's getting the torch. And people just can't believe that. And then sometimes people will say, yeah, but she doesn't walk that well. Yeah, well, she's 13 years old and she has some problems, <laughs> but, she, but she's still running. She's right. still running up the mountain and she's still coming down. And yes, yeah, she has, uh, I, I think I posted a video yesterday on my page about her, a video from four or five years ago, even uh, when she first blocked in her neck and she couldn't lift her head anymore. And I torched her and 15 minutes later, you see the next video where she's happy, the tail waggling, and her head is in the air that people say, it just can't be true, but it is. And, and that's what I have, that's the story I have with all the animals here. I have so many animals that I've saved lives and it just feels great. And that's why it's my life mission to let the people know that we can help them and that they themselves can help their animals. Well, I think one of the big things is, is that hurts us is the uh, diagnostic imaging that's done because when you look at the x-ray, you're going, oh my goodness, put that poor pet down. There's no hope. Um, you know, and, and the difference in Western, in Western medicine, where I was originally taught, the, basically the tenet is, is that uh, function follows form. In other words, if it looks bad, it won't work. Um, and if it looks good, it will work. Uh, the Eastern thought is it's just completely opposite of that is that form follows function. And I remember Dr. Ryan saying vividly, Oh mate, I don't care what it looks like as long as it works. <laughs> so, um, you know, and that's, I, I had a, a an example of a veterinarian friend of mine. He was treating this little poodle for a, a ruptured disc in its back and it was in a lot of pain. It was on one of the NSAIDs and, you know, having a little issues with it. And he said, do you think that red light of yours would work? And I said, well, sure. And so he said, well, if I send her up there, would you treat her? And I said, yeah, that'd be great. Be happy to. I'll send you back for everything else, but I'd be happy to treat her. Well, in the meantime, she went to one of the specialty centers and spent about $2,800 getting an MRI. And uh, they said, oh, my goodness, it's bad. We got to do surgery. And she's going to be paralyzed for sure after the surgery. And she may or may not come back. And uh, so she comes up and she says, well, I, I got this MRI done. Do you want to see it? And I go, no. And she goes, what? <laughs> I go, it doesn't matter. I mean, if it was like this, okay, you know, that needs to be fixed. I get it. But, you know, if it's not, the cord's not snapped in half, how about if we just get it better? I really don't care what it looks like. Yeah. And so I treated the pet. I think after the third pet treatment, the pet was completely pain free and, she said, can I stop the medicine? And I go, yes, you need to stop that. That's medicine is going to kill your pet. Yeah. And then she said, well, how many more do we need to do? And I said, uh, we're done. We really don't need to do any more. If she tweaks it, I'll be happy to. She said, okay, I'll be in Friday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I've treated the pet quite a number of times more because yeah. she's still, even though seeing how her pet improved, she's yeah. like, how can this pet be better? You're not giving them any medicine and the pet's running around acting completely normal. Mm -hmm. Yes. Story yep. after story after story. Yeah. No, it's great. Okay. Um, Terry, how can people find you? Where can, do you have a, yes, you have a Facebook page that's called Dory, Dr. Terry Wood. And so uh, you have messenger, I suppose on your Facebook, they can send you messages. Sure. 
You have your address on the Facebook too, so they can contact your clinic to come and uh, make an appointment. Yes. Now, one thing that it's, I know it's frustrating to a lot of clients, but Oklahoma is part of their, our, my licensing, the vet licensing board, which of course I uh, have to work under. Um, you know, in human medicine in Oklahoma, you can go on FaceTime or Zoom meeting and you can talk to a physician or physician assistant, get a quote unquote exam, get a prescription and it's 45 bucks at Integris and you can do that. The veterinary board says, no, we can't do that. So I'm, I'm, you know, what I can do because what they require is that for me to, you know, deal with something, they have something called the VCPR, veterinary client patient relationship. That's sacred according to the board. And of course we got to follow the rules. So that means I have to actually have seen the pet in person, touched it, you know, examined it, weighed it, taken its temperature, listened to its heart. Um, but what I can do is if somebody from another state or another country, if they have any questions, what I can do legally is I can consult with the veterinarian. Uh, as long as they're the ones that are licensed in that state and they're treating the pet, they can contact me. I'll be happy to visit with them. And, and I, I can do that and stay within the law because a lot of people say, well, okay, what's this? Well, I probably know what it is just by listening, but since I'm not licensed in that state or country, I can't say, but it's like, please have your vet contact me. I'll be happy to visit with them. Yeah, no, that's great. Okay, but they can always come to you. Hey, if they're oh, not sure. sure, and as you said, even from surrounding states, they come to visit you. Right. Uh, if, if they want their pets to heal, the easy way that's not so expensive as doing a $5,000 operation they will, yes. know, they will know how to find you. Okay, let's have a look at that question. Now, the questions we're going to see now, for those who are present here, the questions that we're going to see now, uh, one of them I already answered to the person in, in private, but I think it's just nice if we listen to the vet. Okay, so the first question we are going to have a look at is, let me share that page for a second so we can all read the question. It's from Kerry and she says, I've been told by my vet that a small red or blue light doesn't really do anything. You really need a larger, powerful one that they use and it was $20,000. <laughs> Is one powerful, powerful 10 minute session better or the same as the small lights being used daily? Yeah, that's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I've, I've run into that quite a bit. In fact, a few years back, I lectured at the International Veterinary Acupuncture Society, and it was interesting because there was a veterinarian from Germany there that had a laser that actually was mounted on a semi-truck bed, you know, 50, 60 feet long with yeah. a 10-foot cord. And here I walk in, it's like, this little light of mine, I'm going <laughs> to let it shine. <laughs> it's like, oh, this is all you need. But, you know, there's a you know, a lot of people feel that you've got to use a certain frequency and you have to use this and that and go to a depth. And they're, they're focused on, again, they're looking at the Western paradigm, not the Eastern, because they think, oh, you've got to soak this cell or tissue, you know, with these rays and, and do it. Um, all we have to do with the red 660 nanometer light is just penetrate the skin and, and uh, interact with the collagen there that's all we have to do. And there, and I've read a bunch of data that says that one veterinarian that had worked with lasers for 30 years, he said, well, hard to believe, but the red light penetrates better than the lasers. And the laser, of course, has a, the uh, real possibility of causing tissue damage. And, but I think the big thing here is that, you know, if, if you're selling a $20,000 product, of course, that's better than the $400 product. I mean, you know, like I, like I told you in a communication earlier, one of the only economic terms I know is besides oil bust, I live in Oklahoma, is uh, marginal utility. And that is people have respect for something, they value it by how much they pay for it. So my gracious, if you pay $20,000, this has got to come from heaven and it's perfect. Well, it's, it's overkill. You don't need it. And, and in my opinion, you actually run the risk of, of damage in the tissue. Now, there's no question that those more powerful units will interact with the cells and the mitochondria and increase ATP production. Of course they will. But 
what happens with, with the photonic therapy, we're using the principles of acupuncture. So we're fixing the entire body, not just treating the ouchy sore spot. And that is a huge difference. And, you know, and is so, you know, that that's a huge concept. And instead of just treating the sore spot, you're ignoring all the other problems because it's like a layer to an onion. Once you start peeling things off, there's other issues that you may not even be aware of. But if you follow the principles that Dr. McLaren laid down, you're going to fix those things, even if you don't see them or know that they're there. And uh, that is a huge uh, advantage uh, to that. And I, I can't say enough. And as far as frequency of treatment, I made the mistake of asking because Dr. McLaren said that the light will continue to interact with the collagen for 72 hours after one treatment. I made the mistake of asking him why one time. And I don't know what he said. I just took him at his word. So when I'm treating the pet, the most I ever do is once a day for three days. And then it's once or twice a week. I know when he had his clinic here in Oklahoma City, he would treat twice twice a week for eight considered the standard treatment. Yeah. A lot of times with the difficulty of people being busy and bringing their pet in, many times I just treat them once a week and I get really good results with that. So yeah. the, the idea, again, we're getting down to a, a molecular level dealing with, uh, you know, all that happens. And, you know, as far as just, you know, getting the super semi-truck generator and zapping that poor pet, you know, we can do the red light, interact with the collagen, make it happen, use all the principles of acupuncture, make the entire pet well. That's, that's a huge difference there. Absolutely. Yeah. I totally agree, <laughs> but that's easy. When it has to do with what Dr. Brian McLaren has said, I'm happy to, to always agree. Okay. Right. The second question is from Trudy. She's present. And uh, she's the one with whom I already talked uh, this afternoon, but let's just uh, look at her question because I think your hair is going to just get up a bit, just like mine did this afternoon. And she says, hi, Eva, hoping you and your animals are well. My question for you, would my terrier Lou, age four years, benefit from photonic therapy? The reason I ask, she underwent a spay operation three days ago. Recuperation is difficult and reveals to what point she is unusually tense. She is on pain medication and an antispasmodic to help her relax. I'll order a pocket photonic uh, immediately if you think it will help overcome anxiety. I might add that blood test revealed normal but extremely low thyroid. We repeat the test in one month. Now, I already talked to her and I also saw the dog. She showed me the dog life. And what I meant with my hair going up in my neck was the dog was wearing a big, big collar. Okay? So that the dog would not be able to lick itself or whatever. And the dog was in so much pain last night, it could not even lay down. Now, for me, this is totally already not normal. Three days after... Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I stopped sharing up. Three days after a spay, I mean... My, do my vet here in Spain uh, always says, none of my animals get a color. If I've done the operation correctly, there will be no itching, there will be no pain, and there will be no reason for the dog to lick. If the dog is licking it because it's bothering them, it means something is going on. So when I saw the color, I felt immense pain, also because I know Trudy. And then the, that she tells me the dog is in so much, even though with painkillers, the dog is in so much pain, it can't lay down. That for me is already, uh, whoa, whoa, I, I go back to the vet. And she did, she, she did go back today, she said, and the dog could now lay down. But I mean, you tell us, Dr. Woods, what would you uh, say to Trudy? What would you advise her to do? Well, I'm like, when I go talk at schools, I'll be like a second grader. I'll tell you a great story. <laughs> 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 what, what I do when I do my surgeries, uh, spays, neuters, tumor removals, whatever. Uh, I do the photonic therapy prior uh, to the surgery. And then of course, immediately afterwards, we repeat the bleeding points. And then I treat the scar because, you know, the traditional Chinese surround the dragon, you know, any yeah. scar is a problem. Even if you just did it, it's a scar. And I routinely do not use any pain relievers and virtually never use an Elizabethan collar. Um, the pets hate them. It, it causes a tremendous amount of anxiety. And, and again, what I see when the pet is wanting to lick the sutures, 
I, uh, if you saw me doing the, the, the skin sutures, you'd go, hey, doc, those look a little loose. Well, what will happen is that even if you're very kind to the skin, by the time you clip it and you shave it and you've manipulated it during the surgery, that skin is irritated and it's going to swell. So if you put the skin sutures tight at the time of surgery, eight hours later, they're going to be pulling apart at the seams and, and the pet's probably going to chew them out. Now you got a real problem. Um, so, and also gravity that's on the bottom side, gravity's our friend because it pulls the incision together, doesn't pull it apart. So when I do them, they're actually pretty loose and you're going, doc, that's a little loose. And I go, yep, just like I planned it. Uh, <laughs> but uh and then, of course, when you take the citrus out, they, they look real, real good. The, the thing about it is that, um, you know, I, I had spoken at a, I think, in California somewhere. Anyway, a vet from Tucson had heard me speak. He called me up at the office one day. He's a great friend of mine. And now uh, we got to be good friends. And he said, Terry, he said, on my surgeries, he said, I have to leave the stitches in for 21 days because if I take them out before, they're, the incision's falling apart. And I said, well, are, are you giving them tramadol and, uh, and uh, Rimadyl for post-op pain? He goes, how did you know? <laughs> I said, well, if you just had surgery, would you knowingly take something that made wounds not heal and make the blood not clot? Because when you're giving them that NSAID, that's what's happening. Yeah. And I said, the, the, you know, the tramadol is fine. It's a mu agonist. That's not gonna interfere with healing. But if you get to your red light and do that, you won't even need the tramadol. And it'll heal up. And in, in 10 days, it'll look like you did it three weeks prior. Well, a month went by. I hadn't heard from him. So I called him up and said, hey, how's it going? Oh, it's just like you said. It looks great. 10 days later, they're doing fine. So, you know, that that he found out that there was a much better way to do it. But, yeah, it, it's, uh, of course, the, the photonic therapy can be a, can be a huge help. Uh, you know, even if the sutures were tied too tight, I don't know if they were or not, but even if they're fine, you know, with all the irritation now, they're going to, the sutures are going to be tight now anyway, but yeah, absolutely. The, uh, uh, you know, the photonic therapy is, I, I don't do, I wouldn't consider doing a surgery without it. Yeah. I, I had it, uh, uh, it's been a long time. It was in, I think 2015 or early 2016. Uh, we had a rescue that we saved from the streets with a broken leg. And my vet had operated on the leg, pin outside, inside, blah, blah, blah. And his stitches are up. And he tells me, eh, you come back in 14 days. Okay? And uh, for the stitches. So that was on a Friday. The Friday after, I go back to the clinic because the stitches are already breaking loose, eh, like they have been in there for too long. And I come back and my vet is almost angry with me. Now, I know him really well. So we have a personal relationship that I've known them for 10 years. Uh, I've been invited at their home. They've been invited at my home. I mean, we talk like we know each other really well. So he dares to be more open to me than he would to a normal client, let's say this way. So he, he almost got angry with me to say, but Eva, why did you wait so long? Don't you see those teachers had to get out long time ago? I said, <laughs> Juan, hold on. You only operated on her last week on Friday. He said, that's not possible. That's... I said, Juan, please. I was here last week on Friday. You operated her. These are stitches from last week. He says, that's impossible. I said, the only thing I did was torch the dog. Before the operation, after the operation, and then surrounding the dragging every day. He says, that's not possible. I said, you know what? If you don't believe me, go Thank to you your right. computer. <laughs> no, he went to his computer. And he came back a little bit red. And so I said, and so it can't be, it can't be. That's not possible. It can't be. In within seven days, that dog stitches needed to get out. Yeah. Hardly ever have they been uh, inside uh, any of my animals for more than 10 days. Hardly ever. Now, just torching, torching and torching. And then, then you have the vets who don't believe you. <laughs> But that right. was that that was a good one. Uh, I'm just gonna see because while I was doing my live earlier at six, I had two short questions. I'm quickly gonna ask uh, answer them before we uh, stop this. Uh, one a question was from Trudy because meanwhile she already ordered the Pro Torch. She says I ordered my torch. Do I have to get batteries for it? No, Trudy. In the pack you have a reloadable battery that you can reload. Uh, 
100, 500 times, so don't worry about that. I only have to reload my batteries maybe once a month, and I use them every day on many animals. So it's a big, big, good battery, so don't worry. You don't have to buy anything. So she's asking me that now because she quickly ordered this afternoon, and I've made it so that the torch will be picked up on Monday morning morning we deliver it within 24 hours because I really I am in pain for that dog but I can't get the torch quicker to her because she's a thousand miles away from me so uh but she will she will get it ACP and then the other question was from Kevin that arrived uh and she's uh, Kevin says I am wanting to order a new torch do you recommend I buy the main one or the pocket one and why so what uh, Kevin is talking about uh, the pocket one is this one, the pro torch is this one. I have on my website, I have a page uh, with a blog, which tells you exactly the difference between the two, but I'll say it quickly. The small torch, the pocket torch, I see the pocket torch as a uh, um, first uh, emergency torch. It's as, it's as big as my finger, just a little bigger than my finger. So it's so small, you can just put it in your pocket, have it with you, going horse riding or whatever you're doing, you can always have it with you. But if you're going to be torching horses and humans and, and, and dogs and so on every day or every two days or whatever is needed, I don't know how many animals you have, this battery is very low. I see it as an emergency torch and it only has two modes. The Pro Torch has a very big battery. You can torch many animals every day and maybe reload it once a month. And secondly, it also has three modes. So it has one mode to torch uh, specific acupuncture points. The second mode on a stronger um, milliwatt level is to torch locally. And that has as a strong point pain relief. And then the third mode is the pulse mode, which one, the, the one we need to stimulate melatonin in the body, which is really important for our memory and to sleep well. But on the other hand, the pulse mode Science has shown that it's also stronger in the healing. So if you have a wound that's healing really difficultly, now remember, never forget, if you have a wound that doesn't want to close up, most of the time it's because there's still something inside that needs to get out. Okay, so that's one thing you have to take into account. But on the other hand, if you have a really ugly wound or if you have a, a, a lesion that's really hard to heal, Use the, the pulse mode as if it was the normal mode and do it locally and you will be fine. The pulse mode you can also use on acupuncture points like for to stimulate the melatonin in the body. Okay, so Kevin, if you are using it on more animals, if you're going to use it often, if you want to have the three modes, then you need to take the Pro Torch. And let's not forget, the Pro Torch also has two online sessions included. <laughs> with my team of vets, uh, acupuncturists, and so on. Whenever you have a question, if it's somebody who's close to Dr. Terry Wood, it's probably Dr. Terry Wood that I will contact to uh, advise together what you would need to do. Okay, so, and remember, this, these are the original ones. And yes, they are a lot cheaper than the ones in America, than the copy that they've made in America. But remember, it's not the price that tells you the quality. It's the difference in mission in life that we have. I want everybody to be able to buy them. So altogether, we can make a world with less pain. So that's important to know. Okay, I think these are all the questions. I see a remark from Kim. She says, I was so blessed to have Dr. McLaren come to my place and do trading. Well, Kim, it's always great to have met Dr. Brian McLaren and to have received any teaching from him because... He was just wonderful, and he has gone much too soon. Good. Uh, Dr. Terry Woods, we will see each other soon when we can continue those sessions with Rob McLaren uh, and the others. But meanwhile, do you want to leave us on a Saturday with uh, a special story, maybe? Well, let's see. Um, well, I, I think, you know... It, Oh, I, yeah, I've got one. It, it was a, the father-in-law of one of the ladies at the therapeutic riding program. And he was a very kind of a hard bitten Oklahoma rancher. And he had a yearling with Scott Buck shins. And I said, okay. And uh, his daughter-in-law was saying, well, you need to have Dr. Terry look at it because he can, he can take care of that. And so he, you know, he didn't believe it. He drove up and he was, 
he had the wall of unbelief up. It's like, you got to be kidding me. You're using this little blue thing and plastic and you're going to do this light. You're going to fix my yearling up. And I said, well, just, okay, give me a chance. So I, you know, looked at the horse, did the diagnostics, treated it, retested, tested fine and said, okay, should be good. And I said, please call me in a week and let me know. Sometimes, you know, because that's the thing. Sometimes you need to treat them more than once. And people say, well, if that's so good, why do you have to treat them often? It's like, well, when you go to the doctor and get pills, you're he's treating you two or three times a day, sometimes for weeks at a time. Give me eight times if I need them, please. And But I never heard anything, never heard anything, never heard anything. And I thought, holy cow, this guy's going to come after me because I messed with his yearling. And I, I didn't know. Finally, I saw the daughter-in-law at one of the functions of the therapeutic riding. I said, how's your father-in-law's yearling? Oh, he's just fine. He's tickled to death. The horse is doing just fine. I go, well, thank you for telling me that. I've been worried this whole month about it. Yeah. Well, he could at least have called you to say thank you. Yes, but he didn't. But that's yeah. okay. Horse got better. That was the main thing. That's that's always the main thing, that the animals that we care for get better, yeah. Well, Dr. Woods, Terry, I am so pleased that at such short notice, when I saw this message, I contacted you and I asked you to come here and talk to us tonight, and you just jumped on it. So I am really grateful for your presence here, and maybe one day we will repeat that. And meanwhile, I hope that many people will find you because I know you have done little miracles. What for me are big miracles, or for the people are big miracles, but um, it's so important that we know that there is more in life than Western medicine, and that we do not quickly have to give up on our animals when they say, oh, he has hip dysplasia. You either uh, do the operation or you put him down. No, it doesn't work like that. Just the same with arthritis or with all these things. No, we can help and we can help make them better. And they will be happy because if we see our animal being happy, I think we are happy, isn't it? Absolutely. Okay. Well, I wish you a great weekend and thanks you again for being here tonight with us. Thanks okay. for having me. Okay. Bye everybody. See you next week.